The old Fort Lewis College campus sits in a wide valley just to the west of Durango, shadowed by the spine of the La Plata Mountains. On this ground, soldiers who had fought in the Civil War just 20 years earlier drilled and trained. Native American children were uneasily assimilated into a culture that was not their own, and young men and women studied for careers, their dreams rooted deeply in the lore of mountains and shaped by a century of war, peace, and change. We'll explore the old Fort Lewis campus as a living repository of Four Corners history and a place where current FLC students and others get their hands dirty learning on this episode of Fortifact, up from the sagebrush, the old fort at Hesperus. began life in 1879 as a military outpost located in Pagosa Springs. As a response to settler outcry after the Meeker Massacre, the post was relocated in 1880 to Hesperus, 14 miles southwest of Durango. Utes living nearby proved fairly peaceful, however, and no troops riding out from Fort Lewis fought any major battles or skirmishes. The facility was arranged in a rectangle, with the officers' quarters, outbuildings, and dormitories surrounding a large central parade ground. The fort was so self-sufficient that it was described by pioneering newspaper editor Carolyn Romney as quite a little village. Several companies of the Black Ninth Cavalry were stationed at the fort for a few summers, but they likely found the post as boring and uneventful as their fellow white soldiers whose desire for excitement had to be satisfied with courting the eligible daughters of local ranchers and keeping dangerous mascots. They were kind of caught in the middle. Uh, you know, the Utes were, the Utes and, and the Navajos too, to a, to a lesser degree, complained about um, infringement on their rights. The white settlers, on the other hand, uh, were heartily complaining about the Utes, it made complaints that they were stealing cattle and, or, you know, killing livestock or harassing the settlers. And there was very strong feeling that the Utes must go. And it, it was a widespread feeling in the whole state of Colorado. And, People down here very much of that ilk. You know, people wanted the youths out of here. Um, so the military really was in a position to sort of have to referee these disputes between the Native American groups and the white settlers and the, and the ranchers and so on. So it, it was a tough position to be in. In 1891, Washington decided to close the fort. Yet, even as the last troopers marched into history, plans were afoot for a reinvention. Led by progressive Eastern reformers, the concept of Indian education grew popular in the late 19th century. A children's boarding school model was adopted at Fort Lewis in order to assimilate Native people into the white man's way. At its peak, over 178 tribal children were enrolled. They were immersed in Euro-American culture through radical changes in appearance, language, faith, and careers. It didn't take long for tribal families to learn to hide their children from the school agents. Eventually, enrollment dropped so low that by 1910 the boarding school was closed. Yet the question remained, what to do with the buildings and the land? An answer came in 1911. The facility was transferred to the state of Colorado in exchange for the establishment of a high school. There were two conditions. First, the land would be used for education. Secondly, the new school would always admit Indian students free of tuition and on an equality with white students. Over 100 years later, Fort Lewis College still abides by those progressive agreements. It is one of only two schools in the nation which admits Native students tuition free. It's the program that allows the college to admit students who are college ready. And up to this point, we have over 1,100 students from 
All across the United States, we have students who range in age from 16 up to over 50. After a decade of gradual expansion, Fort Lewis High School became a branch of the larger state A&M college system in 1927. A modern library was constructed around the Great Depression, and the college rolled gracefully into the 20th century. However, storm clouds were gathering overseas. World War II halved the school's enrollment as millions of young men were sent into the mouth of the century's greatest conflict. By 1945, only nine men were left on campus. The college's 45 enrolled women continued on in their absence, holding patriotic drives, inventing new fashionable fads, and coping with wartime shortages when they weren't studying. We wanted to be fashionable, and so we started some of our own. And one of them was the, the flannel plaid shirts with men's shirts, so they hung down halfway to our knees. And then we thought, you know, to dress it up more, we also had white ones that we wore with bow neckties. And also wearing uh, our bobby socks of different colors on each foot. On Wednesday night, was we had to dress for dinner. And this meant that the young men had to wear a dress shirt and a necktie. And we, we girls had to dress in our Sunday best. Uh, no saddle oxfords and bobby socks. <laughs> and this was during the war, and stockings were so hard to find. Uh, uh, nylons, they just didn't exist during the war. And they came up with some rayon ones that were supposed to be Oh, they were terrible. <laughs> so that's one of my memories too, is to trying to get dressed and, and, and using these, these nylon hose that just wouldn't stay up. By the time you got to the dining room, they were sagging. <laughs> Soon enough, the student body soared once more as soldiers returned home, anxious to resume their college careers under the terms of the GI Bill. for early FLC students, including the school's many sports teams who played under the nickname Beavers and later the Aggies. Home games were often played in town in order to attract a large audience, and teams traveled between Durango and the fort in a cantankerous bus nicknamed the Mighty Moo. Sometime during the 1950s, economic realities began to set in. More worldly students were uninterested in a remote rural experience, and the school's newly installed dean, Dale Ray, sought to once again reinvent the school by moving it to Durango. The winter term of 1955 to 56 would be the last for collegiate instruction on the site of the original Fort Lewis. The last half of the 20th century saw the old Fort campus fall into slow decline. Although Colorado State University ran a research station there for several decades, Many of the buildings and infrastructure of the campus were gradually torn down, fell down, or were repurposed. What was once a sprawling 50,000-acre property was sold off and broken up to a current boundary of around 6,000 acres. In 2010, CSU ceased operations, and in an ironic twist, Fort Lewis College's interest in its old home began to be seriously reawakened. Renamed the Old Fort at Hesperus, FLC began using the grounds as study sites for biology, public health, archaeology, astronomy, environmental studies, and even sociology. We have our hops project, which is a variety trial of 11 different varieties of hops grown at high altitudes. We're here at 7,600 feet, so um, we're interested in what can grow at this altitude. We have 11 different varieties out here. So not enough to do anything really commercially with it, but it's strictly just to find out what grows well at high altitude. So these right here are, they're just starting to burr. So this is the premature cone. 
at the very base, I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's these little white little balls and those are what are called lupulins and that is actually what the brewers want. We also have a half an acre education garden where we work with students and uh, the extension programs in the region. And then we have a high tunnel, um, a, a 30 by 96 high tunnel where we use it for season extension. And we're growing a, a little over a thousand peppers in um, the high tunnel. And we also have a micro remediation project that Dr. Phil Schuler in um, environmental and public health is working on. And we are studying uh, the use of oyster mushrooms to remove milestone residue, uh, herbicide residue from the soil. So this is the first year of the field project. And then we have three projects up on the hill. We have our um, orchard, which was established in the early 1900s. So we've been going out and trying to map all the old trees in Montezuma County and we have spillover here into La Plata nice. County. This orchard's one of our spillover ones. We know these trees will grow here. We want these and orchards like this to be our genetic bank for the next hundred years here. This is our future. It's not just our past and that's what's so important about the old trees to us. Inside the orchard we have an apiary with 21 hives and Dr. Bill Collins in the chemistry department's doing research on mites as it relates to colony collapse disorder. Mites are a tiny little bug that lives on a bee and they, they're like a flea on a dog except much bigger. It would be like this, this size on you, dinner, dinner plate size. Bill is the chemistry professor and bees are very chemical. And his student was trying to figure out how to uh, use an extract of thyme, the herb, to take care of the mites. And the last project that people can see today is um, our beginning farmer program or our incubator program. Um, it offers people who are interested in farming access to land and water. Uh, we have an education model where they apply in the fall and go through education all winter and then in the spring we give them access to land and water and mentorship. Fort Lewis College was a newly minted dream, founded by pioneering grit and a love for the land. In a poetic evolution, the old fort is now helping its students understand the skies. An observatory erected in 2003 is used by FLC Sciences to study the universe. As Fort Lewis College enters its second century, we are reminded of all those who worked and studied, taught and sacrificed for today's opportunities. Buildings rise and fall, but the spirit of renewal and rebirth continues through each generation.